Hey VC, Sean from Buzz Bomb Records here. It's been a while. Yeah, like uh, like uh, quite a while. Probably a month, maybe two, since I posted something up here. So just um, been busy with life. A lot of things going on. Um, uh, I think last time I posted something, I had mentioned I was doing the major major uh, reorg on all my stuff, which finally uh, finally finished that literally just yesterday. And I started that on the holiday weekend, Memorial Day weekend. So tells you how long that took. Um, and I was just working on a little bit of time. I threw my back out kind of in the middle of the process of doing something else. And so just uh, kind of had to lay low for a few weeks there. But um, anyway, had a little bit extra time here today and thought I would throw something up. I know I had mentioned... Uh, Several times in previous videos, I got a stack of stuff out there, which I still do. Tons of, tons of things to go through. Things that have been sitting there for uh, again, probably a couple months. It's pathetic, as that sounds. I mean, I've got new stuff out there, like the Rush box set, Permanent Waves. Haven't even cracked it open yet. I know it's pathetic to say that. I can't believe I'm even admitting that. But uh, anyway, that's still out there. I was going to show it today, but um, grabbed a couple other things. And again, I'm, I'm. Uh, this is kind of my first, um, I don't want to call it a vinyl finds because uh, as of, well, last week, um, half step back, last week was the first time I was actually able to go to my record store, the one that I usually go to, um, and it was pretty strange. You had to do it by appointment, which that's still how we're rolling up here in the uh, Seattle area, so it was very strange. It was like me and one other guy in the store very very odd but uh, picked up a few things there but what I was gonna say is for for this uh, topic um, this is stuff I've gotten in the mail and again probably over the last starting three or four months whenever the whenever the pandemic started uh, is when I kind of started ordering more and more stuff online obviously because we can go to the store um, and some of the stuff I ordered online anyway but uh, and, and months before that some of this pre-order stuff but um, Anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, I decided I'm going to call this, uh, or this is going to be my topic of, um, we'll call it, what's in the box. And if anybody watches the Kiss My Wax guys, that's kind of what they use to start off their shows, is to kind of what, show what they got in the mail. And so I'm ripping off their um, naming scheme, I guess, for this segment. But um, I don't know, I guess if they want to tell me that bothers them, they can, but they probably won't. Um, so anyway, what's in the box? Stuff I got in the mail. Let's kind of jump right in. And what you're going to see with a lot of this stuff is, um, not a lot of it, but as I kind of get through these, a lot of it, I'm plugging holes in the collection, you know, stuff that, again, you can get online. Might not necessarily always be in the record store, but starting off with some MoFi stuff. Um, I know some folks have showed this already. So I picked up the uh, Twisted Sister Stay Hungry MoFi. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not going to show all of the vinyl on these. Had a couple of the Cars ones still to get, so I think I have them all now. Um, so I gotta check it up. Mofi. And then I got Heartbeat City. This was the last one again of the main Cars ones. You know what's weird though is my, you know, I, probably unpopular to say this, but my favorite album of the Cars is actually Panorama. And I know some of you are probably going, what? You like that? And actually, I do. That's one of my favorite Cars records, and I haven't seen it on MoFi yet. So I don't know why that is. Kind of hoping they put it out there, because they did every other one except for uh, Panorama. And we can debate on why I like that record them more than the others, but I think it's cool. Um, next here, I've got a stack of stuff. Uh, it's a bunch of Aussie stuff. And again, I know people have shown... You know, again, Ordinary Man. So I, I actually got, when when this thing first popped, I did a pre-order on this one, which is the Super Deluxe version, um, which was the colored vinyl. Um, came with a lithograph, which I'll show here in a second. Autographed by Ozzy, which kind of makes me wonder when I look at some of these, if he's got, like, somebody back there signing. I have no idea. I'm not a big Ozzy autograph guy so I don't know what his signature looks like I, I mean like I do for the kiss stuff but um, so anyway so I ended up getting this one I actually got them all all the different versions so I got 
This one here, which was the smoke. The vinyl looks actually pretty cool. So I'm kind of, it's like a smoky silver. That's what the vinyl and the label looked like. And then it came with the signed litho. You can kind of see there. You guys can tell me or not whether that's real. I hope it is. But <laughs> who knows? Anyway. So I got that. Um, and I got the black. I think Frank was the one who was saying that the first couple copies he got, Frank from Channel 33, that he got off of Amazon was the black vinyl and it sounded like crap, which I've got those. I haven't even, I haven't even opened it because I listened. This is the one I'd opened, so this is the one I listened to, which sounds okay to me. I mean, um, but again, I'm not, I'm not super high fidelity guy anyway. Um, and then a couple other Aussie things. So I know there's a lot of debate out there, me included, on the box set and, and whether or not it's worth 500 bucks to drop for that box set, which, you know, some of the albums are cool. Um, others not, I mean, I never really got into his later things and quite frankly, not really anything after, um, um, geez. I'm trying to think if I even got anything after Ultimate Sin. I don't, not really. I mean, I'll listen to it and it's okay. But um, I, I still, I still live by the first, what is it, the first three albums plus Tribute and then Speak of the Devil. That's my Aussie. That's the stuff I listen to. I listen to the crap out of it. Listen to it when I was in high school, listen to the crap out of it. So um, when that box set came out, I'm like, you know, those are the albums that I wanted. Um, and quite frankly, and I know there's a lot of people said this too, is why the hell um, they couldn't manage to put together uh, Speak of the Devil, which I, I guarantee you that's a copyright thing with Black Sabbath. Pretty much guarantee you that's why they didn't do it. But that's one of my favorite records uh, of all time. Favorite Aussie record. Um, so it's kind of bummed that that wasn't in there. But then again, out of the ones that were in there, uh, I did want, you know, like the, the three or four I just kind of rattled off. So... Uh, kept an eye on eBay as people were kind of selling some of their stuff off and I picked a couple of them up so I picked up uh, I picked up tribute it's again great record um, you know as far as a re-release I mean the quality on these and I'll say that it holds true with all of them is pretty stellar in my opinion far as the kind of the care they put into the quality of the release of these things so and the vinyl is absolutely gorgeous so this is what trib tribute looks like and again I don't know off the top of my head what they're calling this if it's a clear black splatter you know and again as far as sound quality to me it sounds okay I don't you know I can compare it to the original press of that but my copy is actually kind of trashed so I don't really have a good, a good sounding copy of Tribute anyway. So this sounds sounds okay to me. Um, again, same, same thing on the jackets. Uh, then I picked up Bark at the Moon. And again, another one of my favorite Aussie records. This was junior year of high school for me. So again, played the crap out of that thing. We came out. That one's on a kind of a gold, yellow, yellow and black. Again, just freaking awesome looking. Uh, and then same, same kind of sleeve. Repro the sleeve, and again, really high quality as far as the paper, just the weight of the jackets and everything. I got Dire of a Madman, and again, all of these. I think I paid. God. I don't even know what I want to say what I paid. It wasn't a bunch though. I mean, so um, you can find these. I mean, people are selling these off. So if you just want to cherry pick the the box set, kind of like I did. I mean, guys are selling this stuff. Um, there's the Diary of a Madman vinyl. Kind of that bluish. So again, cool stuff. Um, I did not yet pull the trigger on Blizzard. So that's probably going to be the last one that I'll buy out of that set. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, honestly, 
you know, I, don't, I can't see him ever dropping the price on that set, but I mean, I'd, I'd pay 200 bucks for it. I think it's probably a fair price, maybe 250, maybe three. I don't know, but five, five for a bunch of albums that I'm never gonna listen to. I just couldn't, couldn't do it. But anyway, so I got those. Totally stoked on those. Um, more to come, like I said, I still need Blizzard. Uh, I will find that or I will buy that eventually. So, uh, what else we got in here? So next, so we got a couple new releases. Uh, this first one. So I don't know if a lot of folks are going to be familiar with who this is. Uh, band name, and I don't know if I'm even pronouncing this right, Corky. Um, this is the, it's not necessarily a new band, but this is Ian Mackay from Fugazi and Joe Lolly from Fugazi. Uh, and Amy, um, I forget her last name, uh, playing drums on this. So uh, I don't know if this is a project kind of thing for Ian, or I think the I think they had been playing for a while. And there's a couple other projects that I know both those both Joe and Ian had played on, and Amy had played on. I think those two had played together before. But anyway, this one got a little news because they floated a couple of, couple of songs here a few months back before this record came out, and so. Anybody who's a Fugazi fan, like I am, um, Discord fan, um, just anything in kind of in that genre, this holds holds true to all that stuff. So, um, uh, as far as the sound, I mean, it, I don't know. I've, I've probably listened to it four or five times now. Um, it's kind of more. It's kind of subdued, I guess, is the best. <laughs> when I was listening to it, I'm like, that kind of was the first. I don't know, first adjective I thought of. Um, actually, the first song, the first song, Clean Kill, that's one of the first ones, yeah, that they had released, and I dug that song when I heard that. I'm like, man, and you put it on, it's the first track on here, and it's a killer, I mean, it sound, that, that one sounds like a classic Fugazi track, is what that sounds like to me. Um, right off of, actually, you know, The Argument, their, their last record, but... Um, other than that, you know, again, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good album. You know, again, I can't say a whole bunch about it because I haven't listened to it a whole bunch yet. But first few spins, I dig it. It's always awesome to hear something from Ian. Um, and again, you hear me say this all the time about Discord stuff. I just love the way that Don freaking produces these records. So the sound, I, f I freaking love it. Um, so and pretty much anything on Discord, I'm gonna like. But that one's. And it's like a basic black. But again, good record. If again, if you're into Fugazi, you like that stuff, go get this. Get it right off the website, like you always have been able to, for fifteen bucks or whatever it was. So I ended up getting this album. Plus I got the CD. So cool stuff. Another new one. Well, it's not so new. So some of this stuff isn't so new. It was new like three months ago. But that's again it's been sitting out there forever. So, but it's new release in terms of let's call let's call it pandemic new releases, huh? Uh, another one that I picked up during that time, Pearl Jam Gigaton. Um, I haven't seen anybody talk about this one yet, or maybe maybe I just haven't been watching any videos. But uh, so Gigaton came out. I think this came out technically end of March. It might have been April again, but uh, lose track of time. All the crap that's going on in the world. Um, but um, I want to think that's about the time this came in. Again, I had pre-ordered this uh, from Ten Club uh, way back when, when they first announced it. But um, new Pearl Jam record, I think, is the first one in like seven or eight years that they've done. And, and again, if you're a Pearl Jam fan, which I am, and I, you know, there's a lot of debate about that and the era and what these guys are doing now, but I still like it. I like the fact they're still doing music. I'm in a band. I'm in my 50s, and we're still doing music, and it's pretty cool, in my opinion, that they're still doing it. Uh, and it sounds different. This does not sound like every other Pearl Jam record, and I think that's why I like the fact that these guys are still doing it and the way they're doing it. It's just they're not. This is not copy and paste into the next, you know, the next 10 songs or whatever it is. It's it's different. Um, as far as the concept goes, again, I've only listened to this probably four or five times, maybe a few more than that. Um, but um, again, the the sound of the record is cool. I you know first couple songs, 
Um, see, and I don't even know the names of all the songs yet on it, but um, the first one certainly will grab you um, and is that kind of a, I guess, the most normal Pearl Jam kind of sounded song that you would expect, which is maybe why they put it first, but um, the overall record's a good record. And so I like it. I dig it. I think it's cool. Um, and again, these guys always know how to do the packaging right. It's a gatefold. It's really cool looking gatefold. Again, the quality of the paper and the super heavy stock. That's what the back of it looks like. Came with this book, which um, these guys haven't been big into videos in a while. You know, so you're not you don't really see any videos for this, or actually the what you see are more um I don't even know what they call them, but they're more like just visuals. So the videos are basically it's the music and then it'll be some kind of visual that goes along. I mean, Tool does that too, I guess. So it's not your standard kind of fair video stuff. But anyway, cool, cool book. Again, real heavy stock book. And then here's what, what the labels look like. So it's actually a three-sided deal. So this is uh, this is side three, and then on side four, let's get this etch in there. Let's see if I can get the light so you can see it. In the midst of the sixth, that probably means something, but I don't know what it means. Anyway, cool record, Pearl Jam Gigaton, uh, plain black sleeves and then I had also got the Dance of the Clairvoyance 7 inch so wow that's a lot of glare so this again came with the bundle the website bundle you got this little 7 inch again I'm not a big 7 inch guy but I'll take it if they're gonna do them that's kind of what it looks like again this is actually a single sided 7 inch and then the back side has got an etch you can kind of see it That is Dance of Clairvoyance. So that one was new. What are we at? Geez, we're already at 17 minutes, man. I freaking babble so bad in these. So I guess this last sack, really, this is so this is my Kiss Nerddom section. So if you want to turn it off and go watch something else, you can now. Um, and you can skip the Kiss Nerddom piece. And I'm not going to, because again, I spent time plugging holes in my collection, uh, you know. I'll say it again that uh, uh, these are the guys I'm, uh, I've got the most of. Um, I'm trying to get, my goal is to get every U.S. pressing that they did, which means obviously every release, every different year that they released a pressing, were label variants, and all the stuff that goes along with that. So, so I spent, you know, again, quarantine time on searching on eBay to fill some of the spots that need to fill. And really all I need at this point are um, gold stamp promos. There's a couple of those and I got a couple here, but I'm really just down to the super hard ones to get. Are there actually a couple aren't super hard to get, but they're like 500 bucks. I'm not paying 500 bucks for gold stamp provo copy of destroyer, which is up on eBay now. And I don't know why that guy's trying to get 500 bucks out of it. But anyway, I picked up a couple, I, so I got like, so for instance, I got the Animal Eyes, Gold Sand Promo, and it's over there. And I'm not going to show a ton of these because it's not, I don't really need to see them all. Animal Eyes, Gold Stamp Promo, I'm not going to show the vinyl. Uh, this one was a little bit harder to get, but um, this is the Smashes, Gold Stamp. Gold stamp promo smashes. That's filling a hole. And then some of the other ones that I need are club pressing. So some of these, believe it or not, are harder to find than others. But so I picked up a couple of Alive Twos. A couple of Alive Two. Basically, you got your. This is the RCA one. Right there. It's the RCA stamp. And then this one is the Columbia House. Actually, no, this one was the RCA. I'm sorry, the other one was Columbia. Was it? Yeah, the other one was Columbia House, sorry. Or maybe maybe I'm showing the RCA one twice, duh. 
moron. Let me house right there. CRC. So, filled a couple holes with those. And again, I, I'm all over the place today with the camera, by the way. And showing these, I just kind of figured that out. I'm, whatever. Um, and then this one just came, and I'm going to show this in particular the way it is. So, anybody who ordered one of these, like I did, um, and they just jacked, everything about it was jacked up. This is a 45th anniversary, which anybody who's um, into the KISS collectibles knows that they've been putting out uh, colored vinyl, the anniversary sets, kind of as they come up. And again, there's no rhyme or reason to why they're doing it in the order they're doing it, but um, they're doing it. Um, again, a lot of debate about how they're doing it and colors they're choosing. But anyway, so this one just this one just arrived. And funny story on this. So this was supposed to be here. God, uh, might have been in May, and then we got all got an email that said it was going to come out in June. Then June came and went, and so then I sent an email saying, uh, "What's the story on these? Are they coming in?" They replied like the next day saying, "Oh, no, the." albums back ordered and we don't know when we're going to get them and then like i don't know a week later it showed up no no email saying it shipped no nothing but they finally showed up so actually and i had a couple copies ordered um i guess i was one of the lucky ones that the only damage on mine was the fact that some knucklehead this was obviously at the top of a box and used a box cutter to slid the box open and freaking slice the shrink basically put a nice little scratch down the middle of the of the jacket which uh, I've already complained to them I don't know if they'll send me another jacket or not but uh, anyway this showed up um, so that's my gripe on their quality control and I know there's a lot of stuff a lot of bad comments on the website about it so we'll see what they do on the next one because there's actually there's a um, there's a uh, double platinum one that they put up uh, that's probably been a couple weeks ago now that um i was i mean because i'm i'm a nut so i or of course i ordered it and there's a bunch of different versions there's a 200 dollars one that's limited to 500 copies i think that i got so we'll see how they do on those but um anyway this is what the vinyl looked like and i could show some of the other ones i, I guess i never really showed them because it came out a while back but um there's a rock and roll over one there's a hot in the shade there's uh, there's a bunch of them. So anyway, that's the Dress to Kill 45th. And then last but not least, again, this, this came out a while ago, but I wanted to show it because, you know, um, going all the way back to the start of the video, uh, when you heard me call this uh, What's in the Box, um, that's a direct rip from the guys over at Kiss My Wax. And this, I don't know if anybody's shown this, this was their uh, release of Space Invader. Um, so Jason and Joe and Nicholas over at Kiss My Wax, um, they put this together. I think Joe, I know Joe's a, Joe's a graphics guy. And so I think he did a lot of the design on this, but I mean, again, Kiss, Kiss fan or not, as far as a, just a product design, this thing is so freaking awesome. Um, they only had 500 copies of it and again, sold out pretty quick. Uh, but it was their basically remake of the Space Invader record. I think technically it was 10th anniversary, but I think they finally shipped these in, I might have got this in February, I can't remember. Um, but uh, but I never showed it, and I wanted to, because I want to give these guys prop for the design and the work they did on this. Um, but um, this was the slipcase it came into, so you can't, I mean, the camera doesn't do it justice. It's a, this is, it's, it's very sparkly. Um, as far as the design goes, uh, and then, you know, the, it's actually embossed. So like this part's embossed and all the writing on it is, is embossed. And so just incredible work. That was the slip case. And, and then the record itself, they called this a virgin cover because it didn't have the logo on it. Um, they, it is signed. There's a couple things in here signed. All personally signed by Ace, so that's what the cover looked like. And it's kind of that foil kind of look. Again, super heavy card stock. That's the gate, which again, that's super ton of glare. 
That's what the cape fold looked like. Oops. I should have been more prepared with how I'm holding this. Um, and then there's a poster inside. I'm not going to open the, take the poster out and show you. Um, but there was a poster in here too. Let's see what that is. Um, just, a, just a really cool, really cool release. These guys did an awesome job on that. So, oh, and then mine, I actually got a couple. This is 372, so they're hand, hand numbered. 372 out of 500. I got a couple. I don't know what the other ones. And then finally, the vinyl is on this cool kind of. It's not a swirl. I don't know what you'd call that, but just a really cool blue and white vinyl. So that's what that looked like. So I know they've got. Or they've been hinting on. They've got something else going on. Uh, I don't know what it is yet, but um, they did a great job on that. So I want to make sure I showed it. So. Anyway, that's all I'm going to do for today. Again, I'm going to come in under 30 minutes. I guess that's okay um, with all my rambling. But um, again, like I said, more stacks of stuff out there to go through um, that uh, hopefully I'll get some time to, to, uh, to get through that stuff. And um, as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.